Yeah, but still dominated them. That's worrisome going into this series. We're going to be going to Volskaya Foundry here, brought to you by Tempo Storm. So what do you think of this, Skimmy, starting off? Well, I feel like uh, Dragon Shy is a very popular map or a very comfortable map there for Tempo Storm with a composition which showcased a lot of what they're good at doing. Mm. Uh, we begged the question during the draft, you know, if they can't win with this, then what can they win with? Yes, the Drainer was taken away, but on the flip side of that, Ufa was taken away, right? So yeah. it feels to me as, as a case of, well, let's just stick to our comfort maps. Let's just try and draft this one again. Tempest not giving them an inch. Uh well, let's get into it. Game number two here. Tempest leads 1-0 at the moment against Tempo Storm. I think one of the most important factors coming into this draft, though, is this is a map where it's difficult to just avoid the fights until level 20. Exactly. The pr Trigger God Protector is just too tough to ignore. You can't really play around it like you used to be able to pre the Protector rework. And this is the map that Tempo Storm and some of the other teams have been trying desperately to drag the Korean teams to. But the fact is, that is a very obvious pattern. If they haven't been practicing yep. this, then it is a bit of a mistake. But the odds are Tempest will have been practicing this and will come at least a little bit more prepared. So Tempo Storm plays this map really differently to how they play Dragonshire. They play this map in terms of the objective and they play it around item control. So controlling those healing pulses, grabbing the turrets, for example. Uh, so if Tempo Storm, they use their heavy engage, just like we saw on the previous map, to look for team fights but when they get a team fight or get a pick they look for more fights over the items they control the items then look to use the items to win the objectives the actual control points themselves so a little bit of a different style you can't avoid the objective like you can dragon shire you just hold one shrine you're fine um but let's see how tempest drafts around this they get the first pick this time they're going to the malfurion this does once again leave the Maev open let's see if tempo storm ends up getting stuck on this pick I think what's interesting for me, uh, Wolf, is you can actually just look at the Tempo Storm composition from last game, cut and paste it, bring it into this draft deal with this map, and just say you're going to find a lot more success with it. That's what we were going based on last game. It was hard to really try and make those predictions based on those power levels, but Tempest, as as we were so concerned about the Karazim, thinking, eh, is it going to be the pick that they need? They hold off, they hold off, they hold off. I feel like Tempo Storm, if anything, are going to try and draft a very similar composition once again and just say, cool, this time we can actually make things happen. Maev once again coming out, but this time bringing in the Blaze instead of the Sonya. I do very much prefer that on this map. It is a much more defensive hero. If you are able to get onto the control point, it's going to give you much better opportunities. Yeah. And it denies yeah. it. We already talked about how Blaze can work against a Maev, so it denies it away from the opponent. Mm -hmm. Bunker's been MVP this tournament <laughs> when it comes to saving yep. people. <laughs> Bunker has been pretty insane, but now Tempest, they can go for the Genji, as we've yeah. seen them run before. Hanzo has been left available as well. All of these still very high priority uh, priority heroes are open. They can bring in Jahana or Muradin, yeah. which have also been very high up. I think the Jahana is the go-to here. You've already dealt with Maev with this multiple times. Um, the question becomes where they go next to the Johanna because they could run the Genji, but it's with a Malfurion, so you don't have as much protection, you don't have as much healing, but it does allow you to counter-engage so well because Genji is so mobile. Yeah. You can, after you avoid the fight, you could jump over a wall, you could uh, dash in, you could even X-Strike in, as we've seen, become more popular, so mm. they stick with it. A little bit you know, riskier with the Malfurion pick here, but it can still work. I like the Johanna pick up here by Tempest as it gives them a lot of controlling options, especially uh, between the Maev and the Blaze. I feel like if they weren't to pick that one up now, it would definitely be something we would have seen banned away in this spot uh, during the second half of the drafting phase. But I think now Tempest Storm have to look and see what Tempest have and say, well, you've got the Malfurion, the Genji, the Johanna. What are you looking to try and do? Are you looking for the point control? Are you looking for the re-engage? How do you accentuate that further? What is that range assessor going to be? If ever Lockdown wants to try and play safe, he sticks to that comfort pick of the Phoenix, which we've been discussing. It gives you that fantastic point control, uh, and you can poke from afar. So I'm curious as to where Tempest Storm look to try and uh, isolate and, and channel this draft into. That's what we I mean, Phoenix, I was going to say Phoenix is the best option in terms of what we saw last game because his warp gives him such great escapability. Jaina gets banned again here. It's going to be the theme of this entire series, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Jaina being removed would have been, once again, incredible with the Wombo that they already have. And is a little bit more resilient if you go for into the Icebox style. You can protect yourself a little bit better with that style. So instead, Tempest, they, in theory, could be moving into, once again, the they could go double Shimada with the Phoenix taken away, but that's a little bit more vulnerable to Maiev than yeah. the Phoenix was because the Phoenix has the teleport. I don't think they're going to be able to because I think Tempest Storm's going to take the, the Hanzo. Hanzo again. Yeah. it's It's been their go-to pick for this entire tournament group stage. 
Use it to engage, use it to engage, use it to engage. Every time flanking, coming out from uh, the, the dragon there, you always position yourself in such a way to where you can flank, set that up into a blade's charge, into a warden's cage. Tempest Storm is so good at this. I feel like the teams haven't really realized how Tempest yeah. Storm is playing that well, but it's it's definitely where you go here. Do we eventually get an Alex Straza? Because we saw June playing that very well in the group stage. And so dragons? And double dragons? Double dragons? Give me the double could, dragons? Not on this battleground, I don't think. Oh. ETC. So that opens up for a potential Uther as their support as the last pick. So they could go for the ho the Holy Cow combo, the Divine Shield Mosh Pit. True. Uh, and if not, then just any kind of standard healer, stuck off for zone control, or even Alex Draza. But once again, it really depends on what Tempest do, and they already have so much pressure with the Genji. Yeah, I was looking at what heroes that Caterpillar could uh, potentially go on to. He's obviously very proficient on the Garrosh that's been taken away. What are you looking to try and do? You're looking to try and hard engage. Your new break, a little bit too squishy for this composition, in my opinion. Uh, the Diablo, too unpredictable based on the fact that Genji can just reflect that lightning breath. That seems to be the meta in this tournament so far. Not to mention, you don't really know where Tempest are transitioning from this in these last four to five picks. So I feel like the ETC... Uh, Compliments the Maiev, compliments the Blaze, allows them to do pretty much what they did last game with that Johanna and allow that Dragon's Arrow from Fan to try and find some effects. So, like I said, right, I caught it from the start, this feels pretty much like Dragon Shire's draft translated across. This time, though, we should not see a situation where there's like, what, one kill in only 10 minutes. Tracer let through the draft and is snuck in right at the end. The Tassadar Tracer classic combo with the Malfurion, in, also the most popular support with it. Leaves them with basically no hard engage. Yeah. Johanna can struggle a little bit. They're going to be a lot reliant on Johanna and the Mafurian roots, unless I, they go forceful. I think this could be a Lucio pick. We saw Tempo Storm Ooh. use Lucio on this very battleground. June played it to great effect. Allows them to chase and hard and counter engage a little bit better or disengage, which was a big problem for them last game. We're not looking at super hard CC on the side of Tempest. You got the blessed shield. You have the roots, but otherwise you're not looking at big combos and hard engage like you were saying. So the Lucio pick, I think, works really well here. Uh, also, you were talking about the Holy Cow earlier, using the Divine Shield to set up Mosh Pits. This comp's too mobile to really get Mosh value. I think we're probably going to see Stage Dive here, and I think that Lucio just helps them rotate a lot better, helps them set up really good engages, uh, and I would not be surprised to see it again on this map. It is a possibility, and... They are going with the Lucio, the Prophet Wolf, coming in with that pick. That extra mobility that Lucio offers, uh, offers could be absolutely insane, and that sound barrier, if Genji does what he has been doing a lot of times and goes X-Strike or can get those really impressive Dragon Blades, sound barrier could be the saving grace for Tempo Storm. I think I personally actually quite like this Lucio for mm. what Wolf was mentioning, but also for the sole reason that if you look at what Tempest have, Johanna is really the first point of... Uh, of cool, and it seems to be as if Tempest have kind of drafted a composition where they're waiting for Tempo Storm to come at them. Yeah. Then we counter engage. So it feels very much like a this is your map. This is what you want to do. We'll play it slow once again. We can stall you out, and if you yeah. don't get those kills, say 10, 20 minutes into the game, we're going to have a, a Dragon Shire deja vu moment. So the Lucio forces that through. Well, it's time for predictions, and I think that you know something like Lucio alleviates any retreating because you can just catch up with them. But let's go, Tetra. It's an excellent point. <laughs> but I am also very concerned because Tracer is absolutely fantastic. Yes. So I'm going to trust in the... They've got a classic Tracer comp. They don't need to hard engage if they can get picks. I'm going to lean over to Tempest. Okay. This is a tough one because I feel I've been saying all draft long that this is a draft that Tempo Storm can do really, really well on this map. You see what Tempest have, though, and they were able to store things out and they were able to get the kills as a result. I am going to go for Tempest this time around, and I hope I don't get burned. Uh, you know, I really, really like the Lucio. I think it fills all the holes uh, as, as to what we saw from Tempest last game. And as much as I would love to flip-flop after watching one game and, and watching the, the defensive engages there, I think Lucio really helps them hard engage when they need to, helps them retreat and yep. re-engage. Uh, I'm going to stick with Tempest Storm on this one. This is a weird, weird world we live in at this point, because I'm, I'm actually flip-flopping. I'm changing over to Tempest uh, after seeing the first game. I think the battle control is very good. So with that, let's see what Twitch chat thinks as well at home. Da -na -na -na. 57 Ooh, to they've 40 switched as well. percent yeah. So, uh, but I, I completely understand all the justifications that you've made here coming into this, Wolf. Let's head over to our commentary team and see what they think coming into our second game as well. What are your thoughts, guys? Well, I think Lucio's got his work cut out for him versus his Overwatch counterparts at Genji and Tracer, I'll tell you that.
I 100% agree with you. You and I kind of looked at each other when the Lucio pick came in, and I don't think we share the same confidence Wolf does. But it's we a, love you for it, Wolf. Yes, yeah, Wolf. Sure <laughs> there you go. He's, he's not quite meta, true meta, so let's see how he's going to be able to fare in game number two. Lucio, with having such an incredible spike of your healing, but at 16, yeah. it's going to be pretty scary. But if Tempo Storm can do it, they've, they've got to, really, as we get into game two, because they've already lost on Dragonshire, and we know they gave up first pick to bring us to Volskaya Foundry. And on the left side, in blue, we're going to introduce Tempest, as it will be Hyde on Malfurion, Lockdown on Genji, Sign on Johanna, Good on Tassadar, and Dami trying to bring it home on the Tracer. And in the red, North America's finest, Psalm playing Maiev, Glaurung on Blaze, Fan on Hanzo, Caterpillar playing ETC, and June on Lucio. This is Tempo Storm. We'll see how these early engages. If it's one thing that we've seen from the Korean region, especially on this Tracer, that's enabled by not only a Malfurion, but also a Tassadar, is that the flanks will come in heavy. And between a Hanzo and a Lucio, we'll see how well that holds up as we get an instant tether in. The slide goes over. It'll be just fine is that of Tempest as the roots come out and return there from Hyde. What we know from Tempo Storm is they're very synergistic with their Maya. They've obviously played a ton of this hero. And so that kind of synergy with the immediate power slide after the fact, potentially a boop, that's going to be there from Tempo Storm. It's just how they can handle these first few control points as Lucio's healing hasn't ramped up yet. And, you know, Tempest having a Genji, having a Tracer, they've got a lot of early kill pressure between the Pulse Bomb and the Swift Strike of Genji too. So we'll see if Tempo Storm can deal with that. They do have a lot of escape and the self-heal capabilities. You know, you're looking at natural agility. Uh, you have the speed boost from Lucio, but also Vault of the Wardens. And then you've got self-heal on Blaze too. So it's a, we'll see if they can do it enough. But it's Tempo Storm who actually wants to get aggressive here and with a tether forces a recall. Yeah, now Fan, he's like, hey guys, I've got agility into the fight because I've got pressure on the back of this fight. And Fan does put down the turret, but you can see the Tickle oh Beam almost gets the takedown. And now Psalm, he's continuing the engagement. He's going to hop back. There's going to be a little bit of boop. And oh. now Psalm somehow surviving lockdown, trying to get the takedown. Size Storm as well will help confirm that kill. That's going to be first blood and an exciting one, to say the least. And Tempo Storm did walk away with the turret. So, you know, silver linings there. <laughs> they lost Psalm in first blood. Good was waiting to see how his Tassadar goes, obviously. Not always playing this hero and uh, having some adjustments in the laning because of that, keeping Genji in the bottom lane. But Good's positioning was awesome there. He forced the natural agility and then had a lot of pressure on the fan, eventually getting into position so that he could offer up the kill on Psalm 2. Well, we're just about 35 seconds away from that first control point, which is where we'll really get to see how good Dami is on this Tracer, see what type of chaos he can create. Again, Gilly, if I tell you that I have a Tracer with a Malfurion, things are looking good. If I tell you I don't have a Malfurion, but I have a Tassadar, things are looking good. I just am terrified at the fact that they have both, as we see another camp being considered here by Tempo Storm and see if they commit to it. One thing we know about Tempo Storm, they're all about the items on Volskaya Foundry. They want to amass a small fortress with the amount of turrets, the heal pulses that they can get. So they will take any opportunity to get one of those items and then set up in what looks like true old Terran versus Terran fashion of having just so much defense around the control point. But it's also important that they get the control points, and they're there right away with their positioning. Kato doing a good job of body blocking. He got the face melt away and then tried to body block, see if they could get control well done. of that control point. Unable to do so, but they got most of the channel. Now the minute the Tempest walks off, they confirm the channel. So that's going to allow them an opportunity to at least momentarily take controls. We'll look for Tempest to re-engage, as you talked about. That turret still in favor of Tempo Storm. We'll see if they use that as an engagement opportunity. As you can see, Psalm trying to find somebody, anybody to tether on to. Cattle's getting very low here. His power slides out. Use the face mount too, and the pulse bomb's just going to blow him up. Cattle's living for a long time on that point, potentially longer than they would have liked there. And that is going to give them 12 seconds without the Torin. And it gives Tempest a momentary time to start channeling up. But Tempest Storm did get 67% before Cattle fell, and they had to relinquish control. 
That's going to be the problem, I think, a lot throughout this is the continued harassment. You know, you come in, there's not a lot you can do about it. Uh, you do a lockdown. Obviously, you have the tether. Once that's down, it's basically a blind charge or a blind power slide coming from Blaze or ETC. You don't have something like an Uther for that point and click stun. So for Tommy, he just has to dodge predictable skill shots, essentially, which is very easy for somebody to do. There goes down another turret that Tempo Storm was able to pick up, regaining or at least neutralizing control for now. They're going to look to regain control as it's 63, 67, at least for the time being. Now it's time to go up here for Tempo, who also, by the way, Gilly, lacking level 7 for the moment. This is the benefit of having the initial start on the control point is that you get the re-engage possibility too. But without that 7, I, I do fear that they're going to have to back off for the moment. June is taking a lot of damage, amping it up. They keep with Pyromania on the point. That Pulse Bomb is going to come into play actually when he still had the armor from Pyromania. So that's a nice win for Tempo Storm. Som goes in, a sign, a tethered, pulled back in, an immediate power slide, forcing the Nature's Cure. That's going to be an opportunity. Lockdown, however, Swift struck into that backline. Fan trying to get some damage in. Scatter Arrow goes out. Not enough. And oh, there's the no. Psy Storm oh, just wrecking multiple members. June is on the retreat. Lockdown. He's going to make it out with another swift strike. There's going to be a pulse bomb. Cattle's going to be the third to fall. And just like that, Tempest blew this game wide open. We're looking at a full level lead, five kills to zero. They're going to have a protector here in a moment, Gilly, where things might get to 10 really quickly and start snowballing here for Tempest. I am loving the synergy and play and understanding of their opponent's weakness coming out from Tempest in both of these games. They look fantastic. They look like a team that may be able to take some games off of Gen G. And so far, that's been a hard commodity to find, j -Now. <laughs> extremely difficult. If they do meet them in the winner's bracket, one of the best ways that I've ever seen to deal with a team like Jin-G is to fight fire with fire, fight aggression with aggression, and both of these teams in this matchup definitely have it. But right now, it looks like Tempest might have a little bit more. As I said, that race towards 10, getting these walls down, this should get 10 or awfully close to it. And with the threat of that, it's going to allow Tempest to move forward and get this fort in just a moment. Tempest themselves fell victim to an attack right at this very point, too. They lost lockdown and hide. So it's nice to see that not only do they get the root as soon as Vault of the Wardens is down, they get some damage onto Maya, but they are with heroic abilities and a two-level lead over Tempo Storm. Get this top fort, which just enables further protectors, further pushes, further rotations from Tempest. This team is on fire at this event. I got a feeling we might see Twilight Dream if we do see a stage dive, just kind of throw some roots down, hit up with a Twilight Dream when they come in, see if you can get that type of reverse lockdown, that reverse aggression. Right now, we'll see. I feel like if you're Tempo Storm, you're down two levels, you're going to have a hard time coming back in this game because you will be down a talent here by the time the next control point starts. Maybe Mosh Pit might be that desperation option. We'll find out here soon. But Tempo Storm, they are in all sorts of trouble in this early game. Well, Jay, there's not a lot of Mosh Pit interrupts without Twilight Dream 2. You're reliant on Johanna, and you can't guarantee that she won't be in there. It basically paints a, a target on the back of Sign. And anyone else, if Tempo Storm can get those Miracle Mosh Pits, so it may be that we're waiting to see uh, from that, obviously waiting to see what Tempo Storm gets with heroic abilities before Hyde decides what he wants with his heroic ability. But in the meantime, Tempo Storm just has to allow these kinds of rotations and siege to happen from Tempest because they don't have heroic abilities. They don't want to fall farther behind here. They know they're going to have to start making those kinds of miracle and high risk plays in order to get back in this game. But heroic abilities first, then get out on the field second. Uh, two forts down in less than eight minutes is incredibly difficult. And as I said, 13 is going to be here long before that control point for Tempo Storm to catch up to that. So I feel now they're going to have to look to be aggressive. We see this healing camp still a couple of minutes away before that respawns. Cattle obviously looking for an opportunity. Lucio holding his heroic gilly. So <laughs> is this what in what world do we see reverse am hopefully none but maybe june knows something i don't know interesting it does increase the time of amp it up maybe for more healing plus rejuvena since he is 16. <laughs> Well, I mean, if Tracer's going to... Oh, no, there it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I, let's not get too crazy here. Tempo Storm trying to get back in the game through some of these structures, but Tempest, they're going to come down and respond. 13 picked up, and now Tempo Storm forced to hightail it out of there. 
and hopefully find an opportunity again that control point Gilly if you give up another protector after already giving up two forts and you're still down a talent here I feel Tempest is just going to find a way to run all over them because getting right. any type of lockdown onto Tempest with this composition especially once they have the protector it's going to be way too difficult yeah you're looking at either a keep or the final fort going down and then pretty much no way to even contest the next one Tempest Storm this is a moment where we may see Tempo Storm try to take a fight without their teams. You know, it's not normal for them. They always want to take fights on their terms, but this is also a different Tempo Storm than we've seen in the past. It's a Tempo Storm that's willing to take calculated risks when they need to. They understand these situations. Another option might be to push in the bottom lane, but Tempest has already spotted this. There's a lot of Tempo Storm down here. They want to be able to do this, but they don't know where the rest is necessarily because look how pushed the lanes are for Tempest. It's too risky for Tempo Storm, and they back to get a turret. Yeah, the one thing that Tempest did really well here is to get that camp top lane because generally if you're Tempo Storm, you're like, well, that's fine. You can't push into a fort and set up this protector because that fort's not there, so good luck, you know? But now because that camp is there, it does give a response out from Tempo Storm to have to deal with this because it's not the same dynamic there if there was no camp, if there was no fort because they might be able to continue pushing, get towards 13. As it stands, though, we're about 50% channel still desperately trying to get to that 13, and Dami is lurking there seeing if he can find fan. Man, Jay how I just... Tempest has always been known in a team that can team fight with the finest, but their macro game has always been a concern. And if they are playing this well in both aspects of the game, we could be looking at a possible upset. If they make it through Tempo Storm, they're not there yet, and they're gonna have to make it through this fight as the Warden's Cage is out from Psalm. We're gonna see if any follow-up exists as we have a couple members manning the point, trying to gain control of this, seeing if they can get that bunker's gonna be used. Cattle forced to power slide out. X-Strike coming in, not giving it to anybody there. And now Tempo Storm without 13, forced to retreat. It looks like Tempest might be able to get this next protector and really start to open this game. Two games in a row. Tempo Storm has tried to engage. It does not work out for them, and they're just on the run constantly from Tempest. And now a Protector Tempo Storm do cap this assault camp in hopes of trying to slow down the Protector and get some extra damage in. But Tempest are bringing this right down the top lane, looking at keep towers, trying to get 16, maybe open up a win condition. I want to give credit to Tempest there because they didn't need to contest that. Obviously, they wanted to deny that to make sure that Tempo couldn't engage with it. They might have had enough time, but they also arrived just before 13. So they knew they had that in their back pocket as something to be feared. As we see now, an engagement here. This protector still 40 plus seconds left. Very healthy, Gilly, looking to take down a keep. Yeah, they forced back Fan too with some harassment from lockdown, which without natural agility is a little bit scarier of positioning trying to step forward. And he is the big damage dealer to this protector. So well done there. A nice play from Tempest lockdown. Keep does go down, giving 16 to the members of Tempest as they back away, knowing that they have already opened up a way to the core and the world is theirs. Just such a huge lead right now for Tempest as they're starting to work their way towards the bottom. And that's the thing, as with Tempo Storm, they don't have a ton of wave clear. It's really just a lot of Blaze, but he's normally off in the solo. And then Hanzo. So depending on what Tempest wants to do, as you said, they can do whatever they want right now. And you can see Tempo Storm trying to catch them in the rotation in case they did decide to come down and put pressure on that bottom lane, which because that next control point is that bottom, a lot of teams do tend to open that up, soften that up, take away that well. Tempest did not do that. They did get the keep, not much beyond that, but they still have such a huge lead, Gilly. They have a lot of opportunities they can create for themselves. Yeah, the problem is the next control point is gonna be in the bottom, and that's catapults in the top lane for the rest of the game. So Tempest, who has been working really well in this slow play, something I would have never said about Tempest, <laughs> no. by the way. Like, they have completely changed up their play style, and they are playing this to a T, absolute perfection in this series, but anyway, they can play that, that bottom control point slowly and it, it works out better for them because Tempo Storm are gonna have catapults in this top lane for the rest of the game. But hopefully for Tempo Storm, you know, they can get their assault camp, they can try to get some uh, presence in that lane, push it out as far as possible before they go down for that 16 fight, but something's gonna happen for Tempo Storm or they're gonna lose a second game for Tempest. I just wonder, as you alluded to with Tempest, they love to be aggressive, they love to fight, probably almost more than Gen G, they're just maybe not as successful, but they're pretty successful. They're probably sitting down there, they're probably bored. Like, can we engage? Just get on an even talent tier. We want to fight. Well, luckily for them, Tempo Storm starting to get close to 16. This is going to be their best opportunity. If you look at the names of Tempo Storm, they're actually holding on to three turrets. But as you said, with that top lane, the catapults are there. They still have to clean up that camp. 
Temple Storm, however, Gilly, they'll have an opportunity to get back into this game momentarily, barring something crazy happening here in a moment as time gets knocked back. These minions have to be cleared out. Blaze isn't here. Lockdown on the flank, Gilly. Yeah, he's flanking around. Caterpillar seems to be the target, knowing that Blaze is in top, clearing out the assault camp, and he's staying. He's not rotating here. Tempest see this, but with 16 online for Tempo Storm, Tempest are willing to back. Well, with 16 picked up, this is going to be Tempo Storm's best and potentially last good opportunity that they're going to get because if they don't get this team fight, it could potentially be game over. It could be playing into that 20 tier later for the next control point. So for Tempo Storm, we love those items is what they're saying. Wolf talked about it on the panel and they're showing it right here. This is how they play the game. And they're going to dare Tempest. And normally, if this is any other camp, any other map, you're willing to concede camps. But this is an item that contributes to another fight. Tempest, I don't think, is willing to back down here. Yeah, but Psionic Echo is potentially a problem versus Tempo Storm, but this is 16 June now. He has Rejuvenous Sensia, Blessed Shield, though, and Pulse Bomb. Not even needed as ETC falls to the sheer blow-up of Tempest. Now Psalm on the retreat, still has that turret, but he's going to fall. Glaurung going to be the next. That's three members down on the side of Tempo Storm, and Tempest might be just looking to end this. They are in the top lane. They have catapults, three members down. Only Hanzo and Lucio stand in their way, and it looks like Tempest trying to take game number two here, Gilly. Tempo Storm tried to force the fight, but Tempest stood strong. Now all of the turrets dropping, but one of them is for Tempest. And Dami takes out Hanzo, moves on to the core. Still 10 seconds until ETC is even back. And it's a lone Lucio versus all that Tempest has to provide as they're looking to win game two and go up two to nothing versus Tempo. Uh, you know, it just seems like Tempest has the number of Tempo Storm in these Mayav compositions. They had ways to escape in game number one. They had ways to escape here in the form of Tracer. She can blink away. Tassadar can dimensional shift. Genji, he's not going to be there. Generally, triple range, you're not saying something, hey, this sounds good. But for Tempest, it seems like they came in with a clear game plan. They're letting the Mayav through, and they're just executing brilliantly. I would agree with you. I do think that 16 versus 18 fight, to me, feels like for whatever it is for Tempo Storm, something is not going right for their mindset. Yeah. Because the they wanted to start a fight. They knew they needed a fight. They absolutely had to fight there. And yet, they so easily fell apart the minute Tempest engaged against them. Just the discipline from Sign on that front line to hold on Johanna, and then they gave him an inch, and Sign took a mile because he was the one that initiated. Mm -hmm. He set it all up, and then he let the back of that finish that. And speaking of finishing that, I believe uh, we're going to be going to a commercial break. I was actually going to throw it back over to them, but uh, we'll have the a little bit more analysis when we do come back from this commercial break here. More MSB on the way.